Thank you for tuning in. My name is Nabila Khalida and as we know, Malaysia's digital economy emerges as one of the fastest growing sectors. But however, um, the one critical area where Malaysia faces shortcoming is its dependence on outdated legacy systems which could disturb progress across sectors. And this includes robotics, artificial intelligence, AI, the Internet of Things or IoT, cloud technology, blockchain and cyber security. So to discuss further, we have the right authority joining me on the line, which is Mr. Daryl Tan, the co-founder and director uh, for Open Minds Group. Good morning, Mr. Daryl. Good morning, Nabila. Nice to be here. Nice to meet you. Perhaps we could start with how significant Malaysia's uh, dependence on outdated technology or legacy systems? Sure. Um, I think a lot of Malaysian businesses, uh, I won't say they're dependent on legacy, legacy systems, but I would say that most of the time they rely on it because it helps with business continuity. They help with whatever that's working, uh, whatever that is in place is something that they potentially don't want to rock the boat. And this is can cause a problem in the future, in the mid or long term. Um, but that's why we're here also to discuss more about how then uh, uh, the solutions or the efforts done here in Malaysia as well. And of course, it will cause uh, drawbacks or challenges. Perhaps you can share what are those specific challenges that they may, uh, they may face, especially towards uh, businesses, especially when they rely on uh, these outdated uh, legal systems and how will it impact uh, their, um, I would say, competitiveness in their whole organisations? I would say there are a few reasons um, or causes of challenges that they will face. First is uh, integration issues. Uh, number one, that... A lot of legacy systems find difficulty in integrating with modern systems and this causes a lot of lag, a lot of cost, a lot of time issues. And because of integration problems, uh, they are unable to proceed even adopting newer, more modern uh, processes, systems or even um, integration or collaboration between different different systems to talk to each other. The second one I would say is um, the talent, the talent to maintain legacy systems. Um, a lot of time legacy systems require a lot of knowledge from potential talents that have learned certain system coding or languages. And this will cause a very narrow pool of talents where we probably cannot find them anymore or they are very scarce, right? They are very limited. It's not easy to go out there and find talents that can actually maintain legacy systems. And because of that, the third reason I would say is cost. Cost increases. The cost increases because you need to hire talents that are so, so uh, in demand or rather less in demand but limited in supply. Uh, your cost for maintaining the system goes up because again, um, the, the, the maybe certain servers that you need uh, to use or certain processes that you need to adopt, maybe it's a bit more manual, require more manpower and therefore cost also uh, increases. But I would say ultimately, it's the challenge of uh, business continuity, smooth business continuity. I wouldn't say that legacy systems won't help businesses continue in their business, but a smooth transition, a smooth business operation is something that Malaysian businesses may find a drawback or setback if they continue on uh, using legacy systems. And uh, of course, it would definitely impact the business operations, customer satisfactions, and as well as the overall uh, growth of the company. But um, how can we mitigate these challenges effectively? What are the strategies and perhaps what best practices should we imply? I think the first thing we need to be uh, mindful of is that our systems are not on par with perhaps competitors or international business or globally or even locally. We need to realize that as business owners, as C-suites, we need to first overcome or rather acknowledge that the systems that we have may cost us money, may cost us time in, in the mid or to long term. I think the second solution here we can look at is perhaps um, putting certain processes or a task force or a team in place so that when the team is well-versed in uh, transitioning to newer platforms or modern platforms or newer technology, um, the consultants like us, implementations, uh, when, we, when we suggest implementations or solutions, it's easier to talk, it's easier to discuss, it's, it's, it has a, a smoother uh, process in place where we're able to 
uh, consult them or advise them accordingly to what needs to be done. So I think firstly is the mindset. Secondly, is the right people in place uh, to also carry out this project. Um, based on your the reports that you provide by Open uh, Open Minds, it says that Malaysian companies are slow adapters, especially when it comes to modern digital systems and solutions. And if we may to uh, mention the percentage, seventy nine percent of companies in Malaysia are still lagging in digital agility. So uh, we want to know what do you believe um, could be the primary reasons behind this? I would say number one that a lot of business owners uh, they have the fear of the unknown. Right. Uh, if you don't know something, if you have been using something for so long, you're very used to it, you become a creature of habit. A system may, um, well, very much affect the revenue and sales of certain uh, larger organizations. So the fear of the unknown potentially is the primary reason why certain business owners or decision makers or stakeholders um, tend to lag behind in making the decision to uh, transition to newer system. And I would reiterate again, is potentially the uh, problem of finding the right champion to hit the project. I've seen companies that purposely dedicated or hired uh, innovators or tech-savvy talents to just hit the transition uh, period of this uh, legacy systems into new, more modern systems. And because of that, the person is fully dedicated, the, the person is fully focused on that main mission. It makes our job easier as well. Uh, we talk to many stakeholders, C-suites managers, and they are an a, a array of understanding and knowledge. And if we find the right champion to champion uh, this transition or this project, it not only makes the communication easier, it makes the implementation easier because there are a lot of things that tech needs to talk with tech, business with business. And this creates then a momentum that is easier to work with and maybe in fact cut costs, cut time, uh, cut um, tech development uh, time frames, and this then would help uh, businesses move forward even quicker um, in the coming days. But are these uh, obstacles vary across different industries and also sectors, Darius, or is just the same? I think in general, um, the fear of the unknown, uh, having a lack of a champion, is quite widespread. Uh, if you talk about budget and cost. Uh, perhaps the more global companies, the ones that have HQs uh, in, in the West or even in more developed countries potentially see um, the need to change uh, or rather to upgrade. Um, budget is, is, I don't think, something across the board. It really depends on the um, priority of the, of the management uh, and also the uh, certain stakeholders. And I would say that um, the system itself, whether or not it is ready, the, the readiness to adopt something new, um, whether it's the, the resources are in place, the money is in place, the time is right, the campaigns are all done, uh, maybe even in fact is there a transitional season or process in place, uh, or even finding the right people to come in to, to highlight uh, certain of these legacy systems, legacy systems that needs to be changed. Uh, these can potentially also be certain obstacles along the way um, uh, for different companies. But looking at all these uh, obstacles that you mentioned earlier, perhaps what are the initiatives uh, that we can play or uh, imply when it comes to these obstacles? Perhaps uh, the collaborative efforts with organisational um, or perhaps with uh, industry players and also agencies and also governments. What are those ini uh, initiatives that you can suggest to uh, mitigate these uh, obstacles effectively? I think the primary um, viewpoint here we need to understand is that a lot of C-suites and managers, uh, the stakeholders, I'm very sure that they want to hit um, all their KPIs, their milestones, and ultimately most businesses will want um, uh, accuracy of data, they want sales, they want revenue, they want profit. Uh, they want, in fact, a more effective workforce as well. So if we put ourselves into that mindset. A lot of effective collaboration or initiatives that can be taken really happens internally. Internally within the C-suites, internally within the leadership team, there needs to be a sense of urgency to know that if they do not ship, it may cost them even their revenue. 
it may cost them cost, it may cost them talent, or it may cost them other collaboration opportunities. Internally, I think those initiatives need to be uh, um, uh, held accountable too. I think from external forces, sure, governmental grants um, for initiatives to help uh, bring in the right expertise into businesses um, will definitely help. But I would say the accessibility to that list of experts need to also be vetted through, needs to also uh, have a more reasonable uh, accessibility to these kind of experts. And therefore, businesses from small, medium to large would then have the readiness to actually employ or to deploy and to engage this kind of experts. Uh, for example, like us, we have worked with many uh, global companies as well. A lot of the initiatives came from top down, but some need a certain push. And therefore, we went in to highlight certain gaps and we make sure that everybody is comfortable uh, in these changes. We break it down to phases one, two, three, all the way to five. Sometimes it can be a one year, two years uh, kind of a, a, a project, but there is a buy in. There is an initiative from within the company to do so and to after that onboard the talents, onboard the users to fully utilize these uh, newer systems as well. It's interesting when you mentioned about the MSMEs, the micro, small and medium enterprises, uh, where they lack of uh, not just resources, but also uh, awareness when it comes to this uh, digital literacy. So what are the steps uh, should be taken by them? Perhaps the small step, the first step that they should uh, look at when it comes to um, prevent themselves from uh, relying on the outdated uh, legacy systems. I think the SMEs here uh, do not have a lack in information or knowledge. In fact, I feel SMEs sometimes they are even more innovative. They have the freedom to do a lot more things quicker, faster, go out there, break things and pivot. Um, I think SMEs need to put more emphasis uh, also on the future of its business. Right, um, the digital transformation, this word digital transformation or even digital adoption um, is widely used and something that we are very passionate about as well. So working with some SMEs, we find that there is a um, awakening in the SME world where they um, use systems that are more modern or rather I would say the more effective, they're perhaps also more cost effective as a bit more agile. Um, so they are, they are very accustomed to this kind of, uh, of, uh, of adoption. I think for SMEs, the biggest problem is, well, cost. Um, so we try to find our best way also to uh, bring down costs for them, whether it's through subscription, whether it's a turnkey solution, um, whether it's hoping that we can get grants also from different uh, institutions to help build uh, these technology. While building this technology, a lot of SMEs then find that um, the businesses or rather the, the talent pool within the company would be stretched. And because when it's stretched, we hope that we also, the experts can put in our effort, uh, enough resources, consultants, advisors, um, tech readiness, tech developers to come in to also bolster uh, the, the lack um, as well. And I, I would say that SMEs are the ones that are truly running uh, the economy also of Malaysia. And I would say that because of that, there is a very wide spectrum of concerns and challenges, right? It can be some, it can be cost. Some just truly is because they have too many options. Sometimes too many options can also be an obstacle uh, in transitioning or rather in this whole journey of uh, digital transformation. That's why we need the right experts to come in to find or rather audit, put the gaps, uh, find out the gaps, put it together, collaborate together and then find the right, more, most neutral solution to move forward for SMEs. All right, there's a lot more to unpack. We'll, be, uh, we'll go for a short break. We'll be right back after this.
All right, welcome back. I continue and we're still under the topic of digital agility among um, Malaysian businesses and Malaysian companies. Um, and with me right now is Daryl Tan, the co-founder and director for Open Minds Group. And uh, Daryl, to continue the conversation, uh, perhaps you can share notable example or perhaps case studies when it comes to the dependency on a legacy, outdated legacy systems. And how does Open Minds Group play uh, the role uh, and how do they contribute to their digital transformation when it comes to this digital agility? Sure. Um, I think Malaysia has a, a lot of opportunities, uh, a lot of uh, access as well to digital advancements, innovation, transformation. So I would say that um, some of the clients that we work or the brands that we work with, um, some of their legacy systems are, are outdated uh, in terms of uh, the, the tech processes or the languages used. And it's, like I said earlier on, it's very difficult uh, to maintain. Some of it is because they've been using this for 10, 15 years and it actually doesn't belong to them. The IP doesn't really belong to them. And I know that a lot of uh, businesses as well in Malaysia Malaysia faced this uh, similar issue. So just to give you one example, there was a, a JLC uh, that we, we worked with that we transformed their entire trading and risk management system. Um, it was a two years project uh, because it was also a big, huge trading system uh, to trade commodity. Um, and, and because of that, there were a lot of stakeholders uh, in place, right? There were a lot of challenges in terms of unpacking the legacy uh, system, understanding the flow, understanding what needs to be done. The different features was very important. And not only that, the different integrations with different uh, entities or partners or collaborators around the, the globe as well. So there are many users, there are many stakeholders uh, that require to come in, not only to have the buy-in, but to have the their contribution towards the newer system. Um, how we overcame this is obviously we have experts, we have consultants, we have the tech uh, seniors to come in to also advise and from there draw out a flow, draw out a, uh, draw out a journey for them, uh, to draw out the entire plan uh, for them and of course ultimately uh, in the end to implement or to code or to develop it and to deliver it. Uh, of course, certain number of on, uh, onboarding days were, were required uh, to make sure that the system uh, is fully uh, functioning. That whole project uh, basically also uh, help the company to maintain uh, its uptime. It has more consistent response time. Uh, it helped actually centralize the entire database because initially there were also a lot of silo in the database uh, where they get the data from. The newer system was able to also capture, collaborate, integrate, and also uh, centralize the entire database so that everyone has access to a more accurate uh, data source uh, to help their business and to help also uh, manage different stakeholders uh, globally as well. And uh, before we proceed, perhaps uh, I could get a detailed info or insights on what are those specific industry or sectors that faces these uh, digital transformation obstacles? Wow, that's a loaded question because I think we are we are quite agnostic, uh, industry agnostic uh, to a certain extent. But if you look at the bigger picture, if you look at uh, aviation, uh, you look at hospitality, uh, automotive, F&B, uh, to a large extent, pharma as well. Um, this is not an exhaustive list, but if you look at all this industry, there is high SKUs involved. There are high product um, uh, management involved. There's also a lot of uh, inbound leads or inbound users or customers or web-based uh, users coming onto the system. Especially if you talk about uh, aviation, right? Every day, thousands of tickets are built and sold. I know some uh, aviation companies are still using legacy systems or rather systems that are not robust enough uh, to carry forward and therefore brings a lot of new challenges because in the first place, the system cannot be built Further. So we see a lot of industries using, I would use a metaphor, uh, like a like an old car. It still runs, right? It still runs, it still can get from point A to point B. But what a lot of businesses in Malaysia are doing, they're piling on of this old car. They're trying to change, they mod the engine, they try to put heavier loads, they put new tires and new rims. But you can only go so far. After five, ten years, you can only go so far with the frame of 
the car, right? Um, with the chassis of the car, you cannot develop it any further, any bigger, any faster, because it just doesn't work like that. And I would say that Malaysian companies and businesses has the right opportunity, right season right now to upgrade, to upgrade the industries. If you look at um, uh, the World Economy Forum, if you if you understand um, potential job opportunities, if you look at how uh, AI or rather VR and, and, and also AR, um, the many, many technologies, IoT coming into play, um, the industries are almost all agnostic. They all have their own set of legacy problems. And not just on the system side, uh, some of the legacy systems are actually maybe perhaps HR, resource, talent, uh, certain processes, right? And this can actually be uh, mitigated or can be helped or assisted even by technological tools. But we firstly need to understand the main root problem before we can even create a tool to help automate certain things, to help um, uh, manage certain databases and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Then that's the trend right now. But how do you foresee or uh, can you see the outlook of these trends perhaps in two to five years' time? I really hope that uh, whoever's listening in to this today, you know, you would take that first step. And because if you look at this year, 2024 onwards, two to three years from now, um, a lot of things have been uh, exponentially um, increasing in speed. Technology, for example, right? Um, technology used to increase every 10 years. Then it shortened to five years, four years, now three years. If you talk about even as fast as the financial sector, uh, you talk about blockchain, you talk about digitalization, um, tokenization, and so on. The technology and the news moves very, very fast. And because of that, two to three years, I think that, that I, I, I would stay safe uh, away from trends uh, but I would say that if Malaysian companies do not start now to look into the root problem, right? it can be a tech problem, it can be a legacy problem, it can be a digital uh, problem, it can be a marketing, comms, uh, talent problem, sourcing problem, whatever it is, sales. We need to look at the root. And because a lot of Malaysian companies like to put a band-aid over the problem, and been in business for 12 years, we've seen many businesses come with us with challenges are just the top just the fast scratching the surface uh, of the problem. Uh, we like to go to the root problem upwards and find solutions. Uh, and therefore, two to three years time, we hopefully will see a wider adoption or implementation or advancement within the company because they have actually identified the root problem and worked from there rather than keep on putting a bandaid across uh, holes um, uh, to, to solve their problems. Right. And you and I know that we, we want Malaysia to advance, we want Malaysia to be um, the digital hub, we want tech and innovation here. And I believe that in two to three years, if we start today, we can get somewhere, at least somewhere more advanced, more effective, and uh, maybe to a certain extent more automated uh, in the way we work as well. Indeed, the revolution, also digital advancement is moving too fast it's hard for us to keep up but we can try but perhaps uh, before we end this discussion what are your future plans for open minds group perhaps the uh, any partnerships or uh, any uh, projects or innovations in the future for open mind groups what can you share daryl open minds group uh, has always been focused on marketing technology we want to be in the forefront leading uh, the advisory and solutioning uh, of digital and tech and if I were to break that down, a lot of our focus is on customized solutions, on solutions that meet every need uh, across the board for different businesses. And because of that, we have a range of um, uh, 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 solutions and services and even off-the-shelf products that you can plug and play uh, straight away. I think where we stand for Open Minds Group is that all our, our business uh, executives or consultants and teams are trained to look at businesses from the business wide itself right we need to look at the business as a whole before we can understand uh, what are the problems or the gaps uh, there are so moving forward open minds um, we would still focus on these areas of services tech digital corporate training automation analytics 
Um, and this is a wide range, but we have different teams and different entities. Uh, even this year, there are a few restructuring in the leadership team to hopefully enhance the expertise offered uh, to brands and businesses because we believe that Malaysian businesses require a lot of different entities and expertise to come in to also uh, unearth uh, certain challenges. And we have dedicated uh, digital entities, uh, tech entities to help uh, with these uh, issues or these matters uh, as well. But also other partnerships, I would say that we are trying our best to make content creation more affordable as well for SMEs. So that's something uh, that SMEs can, can definitely look out uh, for or can contact us for. Uh, tech solutions, again, uh, we have the Spring team that basically also helps businesses or uh, to, to bring an idea from ideation all the way to commercialization in the fastest, most effective way uh, possible. Um, other areas we are trying to dive, we are diving into other sectors that are having a bit of issues like the property sector, uh, the insurance sector, and this is all in-house. Our effort, we are trying our best to also help this sector. And there I say, um, some plans are hopefully to help the government uh, as well of Malaysia uh, to advance or to make things simpler, to make things more effective uh, for the rakyat. Uh, and we hope to be in this space for a very, very long time and to help uh, not only Malaysian businesses, but globally as well in all their marketing um, and technology um, uh, problems. And we hope that we can find solutions for this. Amazing, amazing. Uh, I'm praying all the best for you, uh, Daryl Tan, and also Open Minds Group on achieving all those aspirations. And may we continue to support businesses in overcoming challenges when it comes to uh, legacy systems and driving digital transformations uh, in the region. So again, I would like to say thank you to Daryl Tan, the co-founder and director for Open Minds Group. You can find this whole discussion on astrowani.com and uh, all of our social media platforms.